first we should lift off our given lungs. We know the mass of the plane equals 0.75 kilograms. The tangential velocity of the plane equals 35 meters per second. The rope length equals 60 meters. And theta, as shown in these diagrams, equals 20 degrees. Next up, we can draw a free body diagram. Here is the center point, and here is the wire. Of the airplane. First, there's force of gravity going downwards. The force of lift. We're just going to copy the free body diagram from above. Force lift, force of tension pulling in this direction. So we can break this down into mass times gravity using Newton's second law. And I'm also going to write that this angle equals theta. And this angle equals theta. Now we can break this in components relative to the path of the plane. So one important thing to notice here is that this plane is not revolving around the rope. It's revolving perpendicular to gravity. So we need to break all the components down on a plane like this. So we'll keep, I'm going to keep mass times gravity, and to break down the force of lift, we can use trig to say that this value is force lift. This component right here is F lift in the y direction, and this component is F lift in the x direction. So using trigonometry, we know that cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse would equal F lift in the y direction over F lift. It's going to call it FL. Thus, we can say that F lift in the y direction equals, if you multiply both sides by F lift, force of lift times cosine of theta. Using that, we can label this side as force lift times cosine of theta. And since this is the cosine of theta, the side right here would be the sine of theta. So we can simply just write this as FL sine of theta. We'll do the same thing here, but just keep in mind that the axis is just tilted like this. So the y direction being cosine, the x direction will be cosine, and the y direction will be sine. So going upwards, we have force of lift. I'm just going to write that as F cosine of theta. Then in this direction we have force times sine of theta. Similarly, going downwards we have tension sine of theta. In this direction we have tension cosine of theta. Let's color our centripetal forces blue. So now this makes sense that the plane is revolving in this direction because there are centripetal forces pointing towards the center of that orbit. Great. Now what do we need to find here? Compute the tension in the wire. So here I'm just going to write T equals question mark. So let's see. We can use the indirection, which is this way. Or we, and we can compute things in the y direction, which is vertical. Let's start by summing our forces in the y direction. That just equals, given that upward is positive and downwards is negative, force cosine of theta minus t sine of theta minus force of gravity, which equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. So to isolate t by itself, we can add it to both sides. Force cosine of theta minus force of gravity equals T sine of theta. So here's the problem. We can figure out force of gravity using mass times gravity, but we, not, but we don't know force of lift either. So we need to bring in another equation in order to solve this. Here we can sum our forces in the indirection. 
which would just equal the sum of force sine theta plus the tangential force times cosine theta equals mass times centripetal acceleration. Since we're looking for a t value, we should probably substitute a value of f in here so that we can just eliminate that variable. So let's get this side in terms of f. So we can say that f sine of theta equals mass times centripetal acceleration minus tangent cosine theta. So f just equals mass times centripetal acceleration minus tangent cosine theta all over. Now we can take this value again and plug it in for f right here. Mass times centripetal acceleration minus t cosine theta over sine of theta times cosine of theta from right here minus let's just minus let's just break force of gravity down into mass times gravity equals force of tension times sine of theta. Since it's cosine sine of theta, we can just convert that to cotangent for simplicity. Mass times centripetal acceleration minus tension times cosine of theta. Both times cotangent of theta equals, I mean, minus mass times gravity equals tension times sine of theta. Now we need to get both of the t's on the same side so that we can isolate it and solve for it. So we must distribute the cotangent to both of our terms. Mass times centripetal acceleration times cotangent of theta minus tension times cosine of theta times cotangent of theta minus mass times gravity equal tension times sine of theta. Now we can add this over to the other side. Now we can add this over to the other side. So we get mass times centripetal acceleration times cotangent of theta minus mass times gravity equals tension sine of theta plus tension cosine of theta times cotangent of theta. Now we can factor out a t from both of our terms. So we're left with t times sine of theta plus cosine of theta times cotangent of theta. Mass times centripetal acceleration times cotangent of theta minus mass times gravity. Now we can just divide both sides by this term right here. So we would get, I'm going to write t on this side instead. Mass times centripetal acceleration times cotangent of theta minus mass times gravity all over sine of theta plus cosine of theta times cotangent of theta. Since we're already given the tangential velocity here for centripetal acceleration, we should use this one instead of this one. We get tangent equals mass times tangential velocity over radius over cotangent of theta minus mass times gravity all, all over sine of theta by cosine of theta times cotangent of theta. And now, as you might have noticed, we have all the values except for our radius. A common mistake that a lot of people make is that they use the length of the rope as a radius. But as we went over earlier, this cannot be the radius because the plane is flying in this direction. So we have to use a bit more trigonometry to figure that out. This angle right here is 20 degrees. And that the length of the rope is 60 meters. We can figure out the radius using cosine of 20, which equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which is r over 60. And we can multiply 60 on both sides, so r equals 60 times cosine of 20. We will get that 
tension, the force of tension is almost 12.796 newtons.